In this lecture, we are going to see the get current position method in detail. We have already seen that there are three methods offered by the HTML5 geolocation API and they are get current position, watch position and clear watch. So the get current position method is used to get the geolocation for a specific point of time. That is to get the current position of the user. The syntax of the get current position method is this. There are three parameters and this parameter is a required parameter that is a necessary parameter and these two are optional parameters. The success callback is a callback function which will be called if the geolocation details is collected successfully. These two are optional parameters and this error callback is a callback function which will be called if the browser does not get the geolocation information correctly and the position options we will discuss it in a coming lecture. Now let's see how to deal with the success callback. In a previous lecture we have already discussed that the callback function that is the a function will be called if the operation was successful with an input parameter that is position object and this position object will have the details we require. So let's do it. I'm opening a new HTML5 file. Okay, let me change the title to get current position. Let us do it in such a way that when the user clicks a button, the information will be displayed. So we are going to add a button, button ID equal to btn position and let us display get current position on the button. There should be some place to display the result. So I am adding a div element div id equal to result. Okay. Next we have to add the script section. So within the head script type equal to text or javascript and we need to call a function on the click of the button so let me add it over here on click equal to let it be get position we are going to call the get position method when the user clicks this button okay so we need to write the get position method so function get position as we have discussed, it is always a good programming practice to check whether the user's browser supports geolocation API. If not, we will display a proper message. So if we need to check whether geolocation is supported, the geolocation API is offered by the navigator object. So navigator dot geolocation. If it is supported, then we can call the get current position method. So navigator dot geolocation dot get current position and we need to specify the required parameter within the parenthesis. So the first parameter is the callback function and let's name it success position. You can name it the way you want okay and else that is if geolocation is not supported by the user's browser then we should display a message let's display it within the development so document dot get element by id the name is result inner html because we want to display a message let us display it like your browser does not support geolocation API. Next we need to write the success position callback function. So function success position. This is the callback function which will be called if the operation was successful and it gets an 
input parameter that is a position object. So I am naming it position. Okay. We have already seen in a previous lecture that the position object has two properties. They are timestamp and coordinates. That is position object has two properties, chords and timestamp. And the chords object returns a number of properties in including latitude, longitude, etc. We will see which all information can be collected using this chords property. These are the details you can collect using chords object that is latitude, longitude, accuracy, altitude, altitude accuracy, heading and speed. Timestamp is a separate property returned by the position object. So let's try to get those information within our success position callback function. So let us collect the latitude and longitude and display it. So where lat equal to position dot c o o r d s because the latitude and longitude are returned from this object chords object dot latitude where long it is for longitude equal to position dot chords dot longitude okay now we just need to display this information in our result div element so document dot get element by id result dot inner html equal to let me display latitude plus the value is lat plus i want to display longitude in a new line so i am attaching br and longitude plus the value is in LONG variable. Now let me save the file. I am going to save it on my desktop itself. Let me name it as get position. Let me save it. Let me try to access it from the desktop. Now if you try to open it like this that is using Google Chrome and try to get the position you will not get it. The issue is some of the browsers does not support geolocation if you access it from a folder. So how we can get the output? We can access it using local host and then get the output. This is the issue with some of the browsers like Chrome, that is Google Chrome, Safari, etc. So to see the output, what you should do? You need to access it from your local host. So for that let me copy this file and I have Apache web server on my computer. So let me paste it in the required folder that is applications. It is inside the SAMP HD docs. So I am pasting it over here. Paste the item. It is prompting for the password. Let me enter it. Okay. It is pasted over here. So if you have Apache web server on your computer, then make sure that you put it inside SAMP HDDocs folder and make sure that your server is running. So let me check it over here. My web server is running. Now if you have IIS installed on your machine, then put it inside that particular folder that is C inet pub folder and make sure that your IIS is running otherwise you will not get an output. Now how will we access this page? We need to access it using local host. So local host now let us check whether we are getting the output I am clicking the get current position button. See, I am getting the latitude and longitude values. Now you might be having a doubt. What is the use? Even if we get some decimal numbers, we are not able to see the current position in a readable manner. 
here come the Google Maps API into picture that we are going to discuss in a separate section. We will pass the latitude and longitude values to Google Maps API to display your location in a map or to display it as a plain text that is you are now near this place or you are now at this place something like that. So we will be able to pass these latitude and longitude values to different APIs to get the required result. Now we have already seen that we can not only get latitude and longitude but also altitude, accuracy and many other values. So let's try whether we are getting those values. Here after displaying the result let us try to display the values as alert. Alert. Another value is accuracy. So accuracy we will get it like position dot, dot coordinates dot accuracy isn't it? So paste accuracy like this alert altitude it is dot altitude alert it is altitude accuracy altitude accuracy then another one is heading that is the direction so let me put it as direction plus dot it is heading h-e-a-d-i-n-g next is speed speed and the final one is timestamp in fact the timestamp is a separate property returned by the position object itself so we don't have to write the c-o-o-r-d-s to get the timestamp so alert timestamp it will be timestamp in milliseconds so plus position dot timestamp let's check which all values we are getting when we click the button so file save refresh let me click the button get current position accuracy is 16 16 then altitude is null altitude accuracy is null direction is null speed is null and timestamp is a value now why are we getting a number of null values because the first three values that is latitude la longitude and accuracy values you will get even if you access it from a computer that is using a browser on a computer the other values we will get depending upon the capability of your GPS system from which you are trying this website so we got latitude and longitude using the get current position method in this lecture we have seen how to collect the required information using get current position method from html5 geolocation in the next lecture we are going to see how to use the watch position method of course the syntax is the same so we will see position options in detail when discussing the watch position method and this error callback that is the error handling will be discussed in detail in another lecture.